Hello and welcome back to the lounge. Today is Tuesday, June 5th, and this is Let's Talk Tuesday. Today we have here Rob Padron from First Financial. First Financial Bank? No, no First Financial. First Financial Inc. Inc. We're a mortgage lender company. Uh, yeah. We're located right here off of Geraldo. Yeah, so I told you guys, let's talk Tuesday. We're going to be bringing in people from uh, different industries, different realms to come and talk to us. For the past five episodes, we've had cigar, you know, cigar industry leaders come in and talk to us about their business, their history, and stuff like that. But today, for the first time, we have someone outside of the cigar industry, someone from the mortgage, real estate, you know, that world, come in and, and talk yeah, to us. Yeah, they smoke plenty of cigars. Yeah, he smokes plenty <laughs> of cigars. We right now we have the Drew Estate. We're gonna smoke that while we talk, but. Uh, Nothing, Rob. So tell us, how did you get into you know mortgages, and how did you you know how did your life lead up to that point? Well, basically, it started back uh, after I graduated high school. I was working for a telemarketing company, and uh, they were going to revamp and pretty much fire everybody before they fired everybody. I decided telemarketing. Telemarketing. So like, phone, you were like working in a call center. Sears telemarketing. So I was selling mm. maintenance agreements, you know, for appliances, mm. and. Uh, before they were going to revamp the company, they were going to get rid of everybody. And I decided to quit before they actually fired mm -hmm. everybody. Uh, in doing so, I went to work for a cousin of mine's, which had a mortgage, uh, she had a title company. And uh, in doing title, I learned uh, the, the aspects of title. But uh, it actually was, it really wasn't what I liked to do. And uh, a lot of mortgage professionals would go and do closings mm -hmm. where I would assist in the closing and then talking to a lot of them they were like why don't you get your mortgage license I decided it was a good idea and in 2003 I got licensed and wow so a while ago 15 years more 2003 like well when yeah. you got your license right too. right right yeah so you've been in, in the industry for a while pretty much yeah so uh what what led up? So your friend told you, "Oh, go and get a mortgage company." So when when yeah, you I mean, did I would always talk to the guys, and and basically, uh, in doing that, they're like, you know, this is more of a more high pace, more of something you'd be interested in. I've always loved numbers. I was good at math in you know school, so I decided to uh, take the the leap of faith, like they yeah. say, and it went pretty well for me. When you first started in the mortgage business, where did you where did you end up? Like, what company did you start your own right away? Or no, actually, I went to work for somebody which I actually only closed one deal with them, which was my first deal. Um, you know, I made a fair amount of money on that first deal, but obviously, my commission split wasn't mm. ideal. Although I was, was it because you were a newcomer, or was it because you yeah, were part I of guess, a company? You know, I was just part of, I guess. Uh, it was my my way of having to pay my dues. And how long did you ha did you uh, stay in that company with the? I, with I only them? closed one deal, and then I went to a, a friend of mine's company where I ended up becoming the office manager for the company. Um, I had gotten my hip replaced, mm. and in doing the hip replacement, I was like three or four months without being able to go to the office. In that time, I decided that you know. I should open my own company. Mm -hmm. And within that time that I was at home recovering from my hip replacement, I opened up my own company in 2006. So you were with your friend for, how long were you at that first company? You were like, what, less than a year at that first No, one? no. I was there for like the, the three years pretty much. Oh, really? No, no, at the, at the first one. Oh, the first one, one deal. One deal. But how long was that? Did you stay there? Like, like, it was like a, a couple, month or two. I had, a, two. A, you know, right off the gate, I had business. Mm -hmm. So, and then you went to your friends and you stayed it with your friend from like 03 all the way to 06. 06. And then that's when you first started First Financial. No. Um, I, I went ahead and it was my own company in 2006 all the way until 2009 after the crash. I tried to hold on as much as I could on yeah, that was Oh, which, man. Yeah. Oh, and you were right. You know, you were at the epitome of that crash. Yeah. Pretty much. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. How was that crash? How did, how did you deal with that? It was, I mean, it affected everybody, you know, not just no, of course. mortgage professionals and stuff but, like that. You know, but, you know, when we when we think back to it, that's the one that we you bring up as the example, like the mortgage crisis, like the housing crisis, the housing crash, all that right, stuff. Right, right, right. So, I mean, no, we just had to deal with it. I, I, I bounced around after that. After closing my own shop, uh, did other things, uh, but back in 2010, 
all the laws were changed, licenses had to be renewed or or you had to get a new license type of thing where you had to register through a different program that what, from what we were registering with the state, we had to be nationalized. So then uh, in 2010, I decided not to renew that license, which in hindsight, I should have just done it because yeah. obviously I came Why back not? into the business. Yeah, true. Um, in 2012... You thought you were not going to go back into mortgages. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was over. Mm. And within 2010 and 11, I dabbled in a little bit of real estate. The itch came back. Mm-hmm. Prices started, you know, they went down, but the sales were there. Yeah, I've been hearing that around 2012, two years, or, you know, a couple of years after it started, you know, showing progress or like showing, you know, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. That's what they told me over at, at uh, Artigiano's when I talked to them. Because, I mean, it hit everyone bad. It hit them bad, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Course, everyone I mean, was hit bad. Restaurants closed, everything, everything. Yeah, you know, yeah. Well, it, there wasn't money yeah. to be spent. Mm-hmm. You had to save money and yeah. try to survive. yeah. Um, after that, I decided uh, to go get my real estate license instead of going back into mortgages. Mm-hmm. That lasted me about a year where the clients were asking me about mortgages and, you know, I started getting the motivation to go yeah. and get my mortgage license mm-hmm. where I let my real estate license expire because I didn't want to feel like I was competition to the people that were providing mm. me my business where a lot of people of like course. to be dual licensed. I don't like that aspect of it because it would be cool. I mean, it, it would be a good idea if you had like both in house, but you specialize specifically in mortgages. No, yeah, only mortgages because I feel like you should master one exactly, industry. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So they say, if, they say you shouldn't be half pregnant on two things. You should be full I, pregnant on right, one. Right, right. Yeah. You know, jack of all trades, master of none. So exactly. I've yeah. Always mastered and known mortgages, so that is my main focus in doing. So I left. You know, you can look up my it's public record. My license has been inactive for real estate for a long time. I, I think it's not in void already. Mm. Uh, so I didn't want, you know, because my business derives from realtors. So basically, I didn't want my realtors to think that I was their competition. Mm-hmm. So now it's like 012. You were dabbling in like real estate. You saw the itch come back to be part of the mortgage. mortgage. What? Uh, was that when you first made financial, first financial? No, first financial doesn't belong to me. What mm-hmm. I am, I was a branch manager for mm-hmm. one of the, the branches. So I, I, I came back with a, a person I knew from back in the, uh, in the days, which I, I was also part of the Florida Association of Mortgage Brokers back then. And I knew him from there. He told me, look, why don't you come back in? I'll show you the ropes. And then, you know, you decide what you want to do. And I did that for like maybe two or three years with him where then I decided to go to the next level. Expand your horizons. Right. And then I became a branch manager for another company uh, that, you know, that here, there, we had our our differences. And then I decided to move forward with First Financial where I've already been there for like a year and a half. And Mm. So it was only very recently that you got That I came to First Financial and, Mm -hmm. you know, being a branch manager and uh, in the process of opening other branches as well, yeah. you know, expanding mm. into a division type. Yeah, market. so like a regional manager, you know, not sort of. not not uh, formally, but in in the sense of yeah. The, the best way that I could I guess explain it to the public is more like a franchisee, mm. okay. where I own a franchise, I abide mm. by their yeah, rules. That makes yeah. But it also run the show the way I want to run the show. Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then, uh, what are what are, what is your day in and out like your your daily look like? Like, what what are some things that a the branch manager or franchisee has to deal with, and some of the things that you have to do during the day? Well, you know, obviously the the, the driver is the production, mm-hmm. but in addition to the the production is all the loans, the 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 aspect of the hospitality with the the realtors and making sure the referral sources are providing us with referrals and making sure they're happy with our service in addition to the loan officers, my staff, you know, the bills. Yeah. <laughs> kind yeah, of a lot of one. bills I can imagine. Yeah. So yeah, yeah no, it's, but it is a, a, a fun thing. Sometimes I feel like, why, why do I, why am I a masochist? Yeah. Cause <laughs> it, it isn't easy. Yeah. No, no, I can imagine. It, yeah. Yeah. It may look easy from, you know, the naked eye. And, yeah. You know, I mean, bits. what are you doing? You're like, you're like, no, you're figuring people's money out. Just hanging out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, it, it it goes way deeper than that. 
yeah, you just don't want to show people. Yeah, the, of course. The, the back end because then they get scared and as, especially a brand new buyer, let's say you're purchasing your home for the first time. I don't want to scare you with all the logistics that go in the back. I just want to keep you comfortable and happy and yeah. get you to you the You want to make sure too. I get my best deal and that, you know, everything just runs smoothly. Yeah. Of course. If I if I start explaining to you every little hiccup that comes a, 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 yeah. around the way, yeah. I try to figure out prior to coming to you of with course, a problem. Of course, yeah. Or if I come with you with a problem, there's a solution yeah. to the problem, mm -hmm. you know? You just need my okay with it. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, what, are, what Well, you said it, it's a lot of fun. What are your, some of your favorite parts about being like in this world, in this industry? Well, I mean, you, you're dealing with a lot of families where they're dependent on you, you know? Mm -hmm. They're going to be homeless if you don't yeah. close the deal. I mean, that, that gives it a certain like uh, rush factor into it because yeah. you want to make sure that they get their home. Yeah. And then the time is getting closer. And, you know, it's the adrenaline of... Making yeah. sure that you got them to the closing table and at the closing table, everybody's happy. Yeah. You know, there there are their hiccups where we have to get an extension for a day or so. I mean, it happens industry-wide uh, because of X, Y, or Z reason. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I don't think I've ever taken a loan that I've actually denied because of the actual client themselves. Mm -hmm. It could have been that they disagreed on some sort of inspection or the property itself wasn't financeable. But as far as me and taking a loan, I feel that I'm like at about 100% intake where if I tell you you're getting a loan, you're qualified for the loan. Now, the other aspect is the actual property mm. or the negotiation between the seller and the buyer. You know? Yeah, of course. So like uh, we've talked about, you know, how you got there, what you're doing now. What are what are some things that you're looking forward to in the future? Well, maybe not just in the business world. Tell me a little bit about your family. Uh, like, are you married? Do you have kids? Yeah, I'm married with my, my wife of 10 years already. And I have two children, two boys. Uh, they're nine and seven. they basketball players. They, really, you know, basketball. <laughs> everything that has to do with extracurricular, we, we have them involved in, you know, yeah. basketball, acting, you know, various things to keep them busy. And, yeah, yeah. And seeing what they like and what they want to do in the future, you know. Of my, course. My life revolves around my, my family. You know? Yeah, yeah, What are some things that you're looking forward to in the future? Not just between family and business. Maybe I know some people like to be secretive about like where they're going, but. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much an open book. Where yeah. Everybody that knows me knows that I like to, to talk about what we do and how we do it and, and the next level of my plans, you know? Yeah. Uh, so basically just, you know, with business aspect, it's expanding to various branches not just in the south florida market up north northern florida or northern, north, Flo oh. northern florida and maybe um i just got a few uh, loan officers that are licensed in other states so we may you know we may uh take that route as well so we're just looking to see what we do and and how we do it and expand you want to carefully the first financial yourself. brand name mm -hmm. yeah yeah because after all it is a bigger company yeah true true what what, are, what does your daily look like here in the Gables? Like, uh, what's your what's your routine here in the Gables? Like, where do you go for lunch? What's your favorite dinner? Like, well, my favorite spot is obviously Hillstones. Oh, true, true. Where you could catch me probably uh, two to three times a week. Yeah. You know? For business lunches and business lunches, or just to have a good meal. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What about uh, cigars? What's your favorite cigar? My favorite cigars uh, typically they're maybe Arturo Fuentes or. You go nice, for something light, medium? I, I usually go light to medium body mm -hmm. just because of the fact that I inhale just a little bit mm, where yeah. you're not supposed to with cigars. Yeah, yeah. But That's what they say. That's what they say. Right. Yeah. But I, I, I just got used to inhaling. I just can't have smoke in my mouth without maybe yeah. taking some. True. So if I take two like a Maduro, then, you know, I feel my, my lungs expand. No, dude. Literally yesterday, I, I filmed the episode for Coffee and Cigars in the Morning. And I smoked the Maduro. Dude, I felt sick the entire day. All the way until I went to sleep. Right. I woke up this morning. I was like, thank God I don't feel sick today. Yeah. No, it was a whole day. It was a whole right. day. You, you, the, the episode I filmed, it was the whole day I felt you're sick. You go into cold sweats and everything. Dude, it was like I felt like throwing up. I was nauseous the whole day. I probably shouldn't have finished because I finished the episode and I was like a third of the way done. And I was like, you know what? Let me just finish it. I didn't want to waste it. You know what I mean? So it was, it was pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. What are, what are some things that you're looking forward to, like in Miami and stuff like that? Well, you're in the real estate business, so what are some some uh, real estate uh, 
things that are happening in the Miami world, maybe that you know of that me and the audience don't know of that's happening right now. Well, the expansion of the of that silver silver line train that is going to take us to Orlando in maybe about an hour or so. Really? I didn't know about that. Yeah. They're well, they've that. always been talking about that. Yeah, but they've already they've already finished phase one, I believe, or phase two, mm -hmm. uh, where it's already running to, I believe, West Palm. And I don't know if they've already inaugurated it all the way to Orlando, but it's, it's in the near future where you're going to be able to travel to Orlando within an hour. Yeah. Versus, you know, last week. I weekend. don't know why, but they've been saying that for years that that's going to happen. It's never really it's, gone it's, through. It's there. It's already in downtown. It's right across from the courthouse. Really? Oh, wow. That's crazy. All these advancements in technology, transportation. What do you think about, like, self-driving cars? I don't know. I, I don't feel comfortable with all that. Um, what do they call it? IA? AI. AI? AI. AI. Artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence. Uh, I don't know. That, it, it, it's... Maybe it's just because you're older. It's scary. Like, you know? I look at that and I'm like, when? Like, I just want that right now. It's it's just scary, you know. It's and and it's become that way uh, throughout the years. You know, look at the tolls. Mm -hmm. Where they, yeah, it's computers running the tolls. Yeah. You know? uh, so now pass. there's a lot of people out of work because they were. What I've always tolled. believed. Yeah, but what I've I believed is that like, when the housing market crashed in 08, what did you do? You adjusted, right? Like if, if you're a truck driver now and you're not thinking about that actively, like if you're a 40 year old truck driver, maybe if you're 60 or 70, maybe you wouldn't be thinking about it as much because you're close to retirement or whatever. But if you're like 40, a 40 year right. old truck driver and you're not thinking in your head continuously, the, the robots are coming for me, my job, you know, in a, in a you know, but if, if you're not constantly thinking that and thinking about how you're going to readjust, how do you think you're ever going to survive when Elon Musk says, here they are, and they all appear at once. And Yeah, no, I mean, it's we're living a movie. W movies I used to watch back in the 90s. Yeah, literally. You know, where, oh, man, but now you see it. Yeah, aren't you excited, though, for the future? I don't know. It's, it's scary, you know? Yeah. Because it's something that we don't understand as of yet. Some people don't understand. Oh, well, what do you mean in the, in the sense that you don't understand? The way it works? Because I don't understand the way it works, but I understand the use that people could have for it. Like me in my car, when I'm driving and I get a text message, I'm like, God damn it. I wish my car could drive so I could answer this text message. You no, know, I get it. I mean, I, I Ubered for a while just because I didn't want, you Dude, know. that was me for like two weeks. Two weeks this year, I was like, I'm just Ubering every day because it was so comfortable. You just get in your car. You don't have to deal with the traffic lights or anything. You're just on your phone, right, quick, of course. And I mean, answering messages. And most of the time, getting to work uh, takes me about 45 minutes. Where do you live? I live uh, towards like the Turnpike and A Street, uh, Belen area. Mm. So the yeah, traffic like in the morning is, yeah. is just not Dude, fun. Only, and then you have everyone going from that area to the Turnpike. Then you catch everyone going to FIU. To the to the FIU, then the Palmetto, and then like still all the way to downtown. Like. I take a lot of back roads. I'm not a fan of main highways or main streets. Mm -hmm. So basically, I, I'll take 8th Street. So the moment I can pass the Palmetto and start taking all the back roads, yeah, which pretty much leads me into the Gables, the Gables yeah. with, with hardly any traffic. Mm. True, true. Yeah, no, that, that's what I talk about because it's well, that's what I mean. Because if you get in a self driving car, you're not really going to care how long it takes you to get there because you're not worried about, oh man, I have to pass this stop sign or anything like that. You're just sitting there calmly enjoying right, the ride. Right, you have a malfunction. And oh man, sudden, that's what they say, but think about it. How, well, they've recalled a bunch of those cars already. Uh, uh, the, I'm, the, not, the, I'm not sure that they've the recalled. beta testing and stuff. Yeah, yeah, but the. Well, there's conspiracy theories that people have done it on purpose to slow the progression of self-driving cars. Like the car, man, I'm gonna get sh I'm gonna get assassinated by Uber. But uh, <laughs> Uber apparently, the uh, the self-driving car that crashed with Uber. Remember, I don't know if you saw the video. There was a guy dri not driving, not driving, yeah, yeah. and then and then it ran over the girl crossing the street. They're saying that Uber did that on purpose because Uber doesn't want us to buy cars. Uber wants us to not have a car. And to use their service because when there's a hundred thousand Uber, you know, there's probably more than that. But when there's, you know, a million Uber drivers on the road an Uber from here to your house is going to cost $2. And that's an, like, it'll be like the, the Uber pool. You know what I mean? Like it'll cost you, it'll, it'll be like a bus. So they don't want us to buy the self-driving cars because it means that we don't have to spend money on their service. What they want us to do is 
not by the car. On them. It depend on them. So but that's the problem. That's Dependence. What, yeah, no, but that's what they. That's why they did that because they crashed the car so that there would be more regulations put onto Tesla and the self driving cars, and so that they wouldn't be able to like meet uh, production demand before, so people could get it. So people would stay waiting and then end up not buying those cars and start using Uber and stuff like that. That's pretty. Crazy. I know. I know. I'm, I'm crazy. I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm a crazy guy. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's it. At the end of the day, it's a computer, and and there's hackers, you know, that That's can very hack true. into these. And they're computers. saying, I know, but they also say that the CIA or can already do that to our normal cars right now. The NSA and the CIA could tap into our cars and make them whole different realm. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> the CIA and stuff like that. It's crazy. Uh, what's up? What's up, What are some of some of your favorite types of music? What music do you listen to on the way to work? <laughs> Depends on the mood in the morning. Typically, hip hop. Mm-hmm. You know, um, sometimes I'm in the mood to listen to like some Frank Sinatra to calm it down. Yeah, calm it down a little. Because uh, when I walk into the office, some days it's just, I feel like it's Armageddon. I feel that. You're going to war. Yeah. No, yeah, no, yeah, for yeah. real. You're We're, going to war. You got like take six off the closings jacket and, a day. Yeah, yeah, let's get to work. Yeah, no, I feel that 100%. And then there's other, there's some Frank Sinatra songs that are like, let me calm down, but there's some that like really hype you up. You know, yeah, yeah, no, gets that of course. Loud voice. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. The uh, the way that music can communicate a feeling to people. I, I I said yesterday that music is the greatest form of communication because it, it's like all these feelings and like they're painting a picture for you and it's like right. And then depending on your mood, the music goes with your mood. You know. Yeah, they're all. They say that audio is going to be the next thing to take over the world. That it went from it went audio back when the radio first came out then it shifted to like visual like tv you know your phone but now they're saying that audio is going to make a comeback again in the form of you know this podcast music and in the future when ai and we're living in a virtual world you know like it's a it's a lot a lot of premises but uh the the way that the world is moving they're saying that you know Trucks are being – truck drivers are getting their jobs taken away. The the cashiers are getting their, their jobs taken away. What's really going to flourish in the future is going to be creative jobs like creating a, a picture, graphic design or stuff like that for the internet. And that's how people are going to make money because they're saying that we're all going to get a basic level income. We're all going to get a certain income from the government, something like that. And I know. It's crazy. One world or world order type like yeah, that. Yeah, sounds like communism to me. <laughs> In a way, yeah, I know. In a way, it does. In a way, it does. In a way, it does sound like communism. I know. But can we really avoid it? I mean, like, we've seen what's going on in in the country. And they're saying, you know, the polls, and they say the polls are fake news and all this other stuff. But we can't take away from the fact that they're saying and they're, they're putting into our minds that, you know, the next generation is all about socialism and communism and stuff like this. So that's another scary thing, you know? It is, but it's it's the it's what they're telling us. Well, listen, you, at the end of the day, um, I've tried to wrap my head around it, and I just don't want to think about it because at the end of the day, like everything fixes itself, nature fixes itself, you know. Yeah, so, we always end up correcting ourselves. Like whenever nature we do corrects anything itself, bad, you yeah, know? it does. It does. Like the way that a hurricane, you know, comes through Miami and knocks down all the old branches on trees. A couple of years later, they look like these marvelous right. brand new trees. It's just just like that yeah or when there's a forest fire the ashes of the trees that were burned down fertilize the soil and allow like new life to spread out or like grow sprout yeah yeah. yeah, that's pretty deep (laughs) well no because you said that nature replaces itself so i'm a deep thinker man i'm a i didn't know if you knew i'm a a philosophy major so like this is these are the type of things that i talk about yeah these are the type of things that i'm thinking about on the daily yeah uh, yeah how's your your instagram going with uh it's going good, go, uh, bro. I, I like posting every day. I'm trying to engage with uh, with uh, followers and our, our following. If you didn't know, you could follow us at Gable Cigars and at the Lounge Media. What's your Instagram? At Rob at P- Rob Padron and or then, the business page is uh, at First Financial Miracle Mile. Miracle Mile. Did you pick the Miracle Mile location or is I, that just since I was in a close vicinity to Miracle Mile and eventually I wanted the office to be on Miracle Mile. My oh, you used to is, live over here? No, no, just the uh, the office location. I'm basically one block, two blocks. No, I'm not talking about the username. I'm talking about did you pick the uh, the location? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I chose the location because oh, I, I wanted to be here. I mean, 
It's the a majority nice area. of it's my favorite part of Miami, the Gables, one hundred percent. There's nothing like it. You know? nothing they they like try it. to replicate it, and it's yeah, no, it doesn't nobody work out. can make it, it happen. You know, the, the row, literally, the Doral grove, is you know, what like, I talk about. Yeah, it does not work. It does not work. There's nowhere like the Gables, uh, brick or anything like that, where yeah, people walk to the restaurants and stuff like that, but they're stuck in these massive buildings where yeah. here there there 20, are buildings 30 40 floor buildings it's just like come on like. but they're like two three story buildings and mm-hmm. everybody you know kind of know each other here in the gables and it's like the the neighborhood it's located. the neighborhood it's yeah. literally the neighborhood yeah well rob you have any last words you want to tell the audience before we wrap this up i oh, just uh enjoyed our conversation and yeah. uh, i look forward to having more yeah and, and coming in and bringing other guests exactly with me. Yeah, yeah yeah well definitely we're i'm trying i'm trying to expand this you know we're still in the first month it's only been like 30 i think this is the 32nd episode that we've had so nice. congratulations so, thank, you, thank you but it's it's very you know at the very early stages of what this could become so we'll definitely have you back we'll bring in some some of your employees maybe that you want to bring in some of your friends you know whoever sure, it is or i could bring in like some some referral sources of uh, realtors and bring them in as well and true talk about that industry about as well their, their yeah. industry and what they do because uh i feel like they may have it harder than i do because a lot of people go to the realtor first which is ass backwards if really they should come i don't know to, about buying a house well you know you should get qualified first you know true of course yeah and have and the money before you go looking unfortunately for it, yeah. people like to look first then get qualified whereas you just wasted your time yeah of course looking for something not knowing Finding, that you were able to qualify of course yeah yeah i can imagine so they divert them back to us to get them pre-approved mm. and then go look at homes because you're not going to drive around half of miami looking at houses just because you think you can afford the house maybe you can but due to your taxes or whatever you, mm. you may not qualify so true at the end of the day they are the ones that get most of the business that comes to us that it shouldn't be that way but i mean obviously i can't yeah. change the world and yeah of course. like what we were discussing earlier yeah. i just don't want to think about things like that because you can't change it you just gotta adapt and mm-hmm. figure out how it's gonna work for you you know gotta adjust well ladies and gentlemen this has been let's talk tuesday number six you can follow us at gable cigars at the lounge dot media at, at rob padrone, padrone at first financial miracle mile at first financial miracle mile and we can we will catch you tomorrow for whiskey and cigars number a oh, whiskey wednesdays number six